Good afternoon YouTube, I'm Chucky2009 and today we're going to start the process of pulling the powertrain out of that truck and swapping it in to this tractor. So this truck is going to be the donor vehicle for this build. It is a 1981 half ton Chevy. Uh, it does have the mighty three quarter ton axles underneath it and it also has this Scottsdale 10 badge with electronic spark control not really sure what any of that means but it does look kind of cool so i'm glad that's on there and the truck itself overall does seem to be pretty solid which i'm happy about however i will say for texas truck standards it is extremely rusty but it's all there and i'm told there is nothing wrong with it when they parked it so you know i figured i'd take a chance on it we got the old school dashboard in here as well and the odometer on this particular truck reads out about 67,000 miles of change However, the guy I bought this from was actually the same guy I bought the tractor from. I went to look at the tractor and he had the truck sitting there too and, and one thing led to another and I bought them both. Uh, he did say that this odometer is definitely rolled over at least once, if not twice, so that's kind of in the back of my mind through all this. It's also a 4x4 with, of course, a manual uh, transfer case on the floor and it does have an automatic transmission. However, it's the mighty Turbo 400 transmission, so it should be good for, uh, for anything I want to get this you know, V8 tractor into, especially because I'm really building this as, as more of a toy. It's, it's probably not going to see that much actual tractor work, but I really want to do this just to do it. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to getting this build kicked off. So, all that's the good news. The bad news is that this thing has been sitting for about 15 years so far. Evidently, back in 1999, the guy who owned this then uh, went to buy a new truck and he didn't really like the trade-in value they offered him for this one, so he just kept it and parked it like many farmers do. And 15 years later, <laughs> it moved. And uh, one thing led to another and it ends up in my yard. smoke YouTube so I'm gonna say that's probably good enough for now uh, overall pretty happy with how this day has gone so far we got this thing running for the first time in a decade and a half uh, which I think is really cool I want to keep that transfer case because I kind of want to add like a uh, an accessory drive to the tractor someday you know so when you put this thing in 4x4 and you put the tractors transmission in neutral then you've got a useful spinning shaft off the uh, off the front of the tractor. Not sure if I ever brought this up before, but our finished creation is going to have two transmissions. Why? Because the stock motor that came in that tractor throttle wide open is like 1800 RPMs or something. That's obviously not a lot for a modern truck engine like what's going into it. So, uh, you know, using two transmissions will give me a greater selection of speeds. It'll make it so the tractor isn't always going way too fast to actually do anything practical. And, uh, and it also simplifies things because instead of mating that uh, small block to the tractor, I don't actually have to do that. I just have to uh, make a custom drive shaft that runs off the back of the transfer case to the front of the tractor's transmission. So it should simplify the project by quite a bit. <laughs> what could go wrong? And as my buddy Wes always used to say, there's really nothing to it but to do it. So let's fire up the sawzall and the colorful vocabulary and hope I can get most of these parts out of here in the proper number of pieces. So one of the main problems that we have to work against here is the fact that I am not a mechanic. I don't know how to work on vehicles that much. I mean, I can do some stuff, but I'm pretty limited. I don't have the skill set and I don't have the experience. However, I can come up with crazy ideas like dropping a small block Chevy V8 into a Farm All H, you know, an old tractor just for the heck of it. Uh, so we're going to have to try and work through that. The other problem is the day I filmed this was just one of those days where absolutely nothing goes right. 
First things first, the dang tractor wouldn't start. Turns out the battery died. Throughout the rest of the day, I dealt with the tractor wanting to keep dying because there was crap in the fuel system, and I ran it out of gas. Tractor just ran out of gas, YouTube. I guess I can't really complain too much because I got this thing, and I think it was back in May, and I put five gallons of gas in it, and after everything I've done with this tractor, we just got to the bottom of that. So after, once again, jump-starting the tractor, I mean, I don't mind doing this from time to time, but for crying out loud, the jumper cables were still warm the second time I jump-started it from the first time I jumped. Oh, never mind. As you can see, persistence paid off, and I was able to drag the front axle out from underneath this truck. It honestly wasn't that bad, but I was really glad when this thing was out of here. And once I had it removed, and I just uh, took the tension off the chain here, then I used the lift on this tractor to pick it up, and I set it out beside the shops you'll see in a moment here for future use. <laughs> Unfortunately, I guess that I can no longer go about fixing farm equipment, at least this thing, by beating on it with a wrench. Although that was fun for quite some time. Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Chucky2009, and I have never once let a slight problem like not having the right tools or skill set keep me from getting a job done, and you shouldn't either. So once the powertrain had been harvested, I went ahead and started to remove the rear axle. Also forgot to remove the emergency brake cable. Seriously? I did eventually get the truck jacked back up and I got to put back on some blocks and the axle was fine. I don't think anything actually got damaged. Alright YouTube, so today I'm going to be using my welding skills in combination with my newfound yet limited machining skills to replace some parts with about 70 years worth of wear on them and get this tractor seat back into a uh, usable condition.
It's 100 times better than it was, and I don't feel like I'm about to fall off this thing because it's going side to side. This, uh, this new setup is completely and totally solid. That's not bad at all. I can live with this.
You want to give it another go? Yeah, let it, let it out. We'll see what happens. All right. Now I will say this beast isn't the easiest thing in the world to drive just because of the clouds and smoke everywhere and the fuel tank that's directly in front of you, but what you do is you set this thing in uh, one of the gears for the tractor's original transmission, then you crank it up, then you use this shifter here to put the truck's transmission into gear, which starts turning that custom drive shaft, which is what starts turning the tractor's transmission, and then, depending upon where you set it, you know, you got the uh, however many gears the truck's transmission has, multiplied by the five speeds plus reverse of the tractor's transmission. So, there's a lot of adjustability when you're driving this thing, and with all that power geared way down in the tractor's transmission, I gotta tell you guys, it feels like you can literally pull a house off its foundation.
Come on, son. Give me a little bit of gear. Oh, boy. So I took my shovel and I dug out the tractor's drawbar to the best of my ability. That would do the bare minimum of what I needed it to. And uh, so once I had this thing exposed, I figured we might as well try and fire up the good old V7 intergalactic harvester and hope that, that carburetor isn't going to be too big of a pain in the rear end getting this thing going. and looking at this that the biggest problem with this engine is that it's f***ed. You got gas? Yeah, tractor's in neutral, ignition's on. Yeah, no, nah, it will go. The problem is it's carbureted. Ah, come on. to do is we're going to swap in the uh, the 460 big block
Yeah. I thought opening a choke would slow it down, but it just sped it up. Oh. Damn, I suck at this game. <laughs> all right, so we got, we're getting some smoke. I think that's just from all the crap that was like everywhere in that engine. Woo. And uh, we're getting some smoke literally off the, uh, we're still going, right? We are. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're getting some smoke. Yeah, this is nothing. Most of this is just coming off the, uh, the exhaust manifolds. Yeah, it's just coming off the exhaust manifolds and like uh, our new pipes are smoking. There's like some oil on there to keep it from rusting. All this smoke is purely external, just with some of the gunk I guess we displaced on this engine. So <laughs> We displaced quite a bit of gunk. Yeah, I wonder why it's like full throttle though. That was kind of weird. Um, so I guess, I guess this meat, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Not so much for the belt that launched. We've got a freaking V belt like over here. <laughs> Bitch didn't really fit right in the first place. So I mean, other than the fact that it's full throttle only and it catches on fire out the carburetor, I think it's pretty much perfect. Great. Set close to idle to a little above. Directors in neutral. Here we go. 